Hello, hello everyone and welcome to Divine Debut. This is Kathy speaking. This is your Divine Spread for the week starting 19th of September of 2021. Now the message is important for when you view this video. The dates should not be so important. So the message for the week ahead, let's say roughly, and of course timing can be very fluid in the tarot. I do reference astrological things that are going on because the astrological placements, movements, um, and interactions between the planets do affect our life. Whatever's going on in the sky is a reflection in our life on this 3D plane. And that's why I believe that astrology and tarot work well together. Um, divine spread, which is the spread that I've created a few years back. I know it's a very popular spread. Let's see what the week ahead shows. Remember, we're reading the energies, so this may or may not resonate for all of you. Enjoy your stay here with me. Let's spend some time together and see what, what spirit is wanting to reiterate, to communicate, as we are in the energies now of a full moon in the sign of Pisces. Full moons mean endings. Pisces can be anything concerning confusion, illusion, deception, but also spirit. What is it that we believe? Is there truth in what we believe, in what we fantasize? Full moon in Pisces, very sensitive, very intuitive. Pay attention to your dreams, everyone, this week. Let's see what is, what could be ending and after endings come new beginnings. Let's see what it is that's going on. So the week starting roughly the 19th of September, everyone. So we have the sun at the foundation. Beautiful. Leo energies. The sun speaks to clarity, speaks to happiness, speaks to children being childlike. Matters of the heart, uh, wanting to have fun. This is clarity, obviously. And as you can see, the little boy on the horse here, he looks so happy. Very childlike, very creative. Leo. Leo is leadership. Leo is generosity. It's fire. It's desire. It's risk taking. Let's see what's hidden. The will, fortune. That's a good, that's something really good that could be hidden. <laughs> Will, fortune, Jupiter, divine timing, expansion, growth, truth, justice. Recent past, seven of pentacles, having worked on something but being stuck. A seven does speak to turning a corner, speaks to conflict, does show exhaustion here. So whatever it is that we're creating or working on or hoping, and we've put heart in, the Wheel of Fortune says that there is a major ending. It is a 10 after all. And 10 does break down to an ace, right? What The, the Wheel of Fortune comes after the Hermit. Now the sun is practically um, ingressing where, you know, the 20th, um, sorry, is the full moon, okay, 20th or 21st. We've got the equinox where the sun will be ingressing into Libra. Change of season, change of energies. The focus will be on relationships, matters of justice, fairness, um, people we work with, family members, all relationships. What's going on in the now? And we've got the hanging man, <laughs> which I see here as whatever we've sacrificed, whatever we've been hoping for, Remember that the hanging man could speak to the closing up of a cycle. But this can also speak to surrender, surrendering. Now, Pisces and full moons always speak to something that is shown because the moon does not have its own light. Therefore, it receives the light from the sun, something that's been 
mystical, hidden, um, illusionary, deceptive will be the focus, will be seeing things. Now, the hanging man can also speak to having the ability to look at things from a different perspective, from a higher perspective, I would say, from a magical, a spiritual view. What's crowning the reading, please, Spirit? There is the moon. Here is the sun and here is the moon. Full moon means, you know, the moon is in Pisces, right? And the sun is moving through Virgo. That's how we get the full moon. So the moon will be lit up from the sun. Now, the moon can speak to fears. It can speak to anything to do with mothers, our countries, our homes, um, perception, well, intuitive perception. We know that Pisces can be very dreamy or, as I said, pay attention to your dreams. Pisces can also speak to compassion, empathy, sympathy, love, love on a higher level, unconditional love. What is the action and advice? So we've got Pisces, Cancer, Gemini. Uh, what did I say? Gemini. Well, Gemini is opposite from Jupiter. So I guess we could be talking about the nodes, the nodes of the moon, which south node is in Sagittarius, north node is in Gemini. And these are fated events that are playing out. Now, the nodes are getting ready to leave. At the end of the year, they will be transitioning from Gemini, Sagittarius, which they're both mutable signs. So well, there's been a lot of mutation or we've been needing to go with the changes the nodes are going to change so with gemini and sagittarius it's all about the student and the teacher having learned something from someone or having taught someone something now the south node and sagittarius our beliefs whatever it is that we've believed in or you know anything to do with our philosophies we're letting go of old ways of thinking or anything that kept us bound from our higher self um you know the south known sagittarius which can speak to distance physical distance other cultures different beliefs that's what we should be letting go of so maybe that's why i said gemini because speaking of the nodes these are you know this is us being taken off a path that's not working for us anymore or a path that was not for our highest good and it's changing there's just like with the equinox half day half night right equal hours of the day the day, you know the day and the night equinox the sun moving into libra the north node sorry the northern hemisphere moves into autumn and the southern hemisphere into spring so the energies are shifting very strongly and Please do not forget that Pisces is the 12th house, which means that we could be closing up a major karmic cycle chapter in our lives where we've surrendered a lot, we've done a lot, we've put in a lot of effort. Okay, so we'll see what this combination is all about. Something is being shown here. Remember, we've got the mother and the father. The uh, moon speaks to that divine feminine energy. The... Um, the yin energy and the yang energy is the sun, the masculine. These two come together and reproduce. And we could be talking about reproduction. I mean, the sun does speak to children. We've got children, the father and the mother. What is the action and advice? We've got the queen of cups, strong, intuitive queen. Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, and as I'm doing this reading, Venus is moving through Scorpio, which is transmutating uh, love relationships, deep connections through a death and a rebirth. Queen of Cups, very sacrificial, very giving, again, very much the Piscean energy, very, very loving, ready to offer one's heart on a platter. What is the potential outcome? Wow. <laughs> wow, everyone. The tower. Mars. Mars in Libra. 
something is shifting majorly here. It can be shocking, it can be exciting, it can be surprising. This could also be an awakening that we're going through. It could be a spiritual awakening, an aha moment. Okay, have we been trusting in our intuition? With whatever we've been sacrificing and giving and working on, Jupiter here says that there is an ending to a chapter. What comes after Jupiter, number 10, is the Justice card, number 11, and that is Libra. So where there's been injustices, remember that Jupiter also does speak to matters of justice, matters of um, fairness, a sense of, you know, expansion and growth and optimism maybe this is the end of difficult work having been done this is the the card of capricorn and saturn saturn being the darkness saturn being restriction and being limited having put in the work but feeling as though we're not getting anywhere because the heart is here the heart is at the seed of this reading and yes this can be a love relationship something is going to be seen here I see the tower as Uranus in Taurus, and we know that uh, Uranus and Saturn have been squaring all year. We're dealing with old matters, new matters. We're trying to move towards the future. Saturn is trying to hold us back in a vicious cycle, something that we needed to work through. Saturn says you don't get through. You don't get the key to unlock that door unless you've done the work, unless you've been standing in your truth and in your integrity. Saturn is also all about timing. So the tower is a major shift. As I said, it's an awakening. It's an, a moment, could be a difficult moment where this, you know, shift, something hasn't been built well, therefore it's coming down and change. Something else needs to be built on this, in this area of life with whatever that is for you. Let's see what spirit holds for us. How are the planetary uh, placements or movements affecting us, affecting the energies now? We've got the emperor, everyone. So Aries, Taurus could be any other sign. We've got the five of cups, which is the card of regrets. So this emperor has regrets something, something to do with the past. He's mulling over the past. And we've got the Ace of Pentacles. Remember, fives speak to change. Five is also the number of, in the Major Arcana, it's the number of the Hierophant. And the Hierophant can speak to someone's beliefs, can speak to a corporate ladder situation, business, where there's been disappointments. The Hierophant can also speak to a marriage, of course, to traditions, someone following their traditions. Fives, though, speak to change. There's been an imbalance here concerning a stable new beginning, something that promises a long-term commitment, matters of money, business. And what the five here is telling me is that don't mull over the past. There's another connection here, another agreement, another form of balance, which we should be working towards with Mars moving through Libra. So it could, this could also speak to a disappointment with litigation, sort of someone counting their, their losses um, anyway and still having a chance. Not all is lost with the Five of Cups here. So it's a disappointment, yes. Um, maybe just a disappointment. But the Ace of Pentacles here promises something that is of value, something that is stable. So emotionally, it hasn't been easy for this emperor, whatever it is that they've uh, uh, lost from the past. And we've got the Hermit here, Virgo. So someone's been in their cave, in their in seclusion, trying to see the light, right, doing their their work quietly. The hermit also speaks to a spiritual undertaking or an awakening or remember that this is someone that's very wise. This could also be a teacher or someone that is an advisor for this emperor. The hermit can also speak to someone not being out there, not communicating, 
Remember the uh, moon can speak to secrecy, an illusion, unknown matters concerning the heart, concerning a child, concerning someone's happiness, whatever it is that they're creating in life. We've got the strength card, so we've got strong Leo energies here as well. The strength card does speak to someone desiring something. This is strong desire, but it's also a form of control. Now, the strength card says that someone needs to be strong here and be able to look or, you know, hermit is someone that has got the ability to be discriminative, to do the work, to um, cross their eyes, dot their T's. What did I say? Uh, dot their I's and cross their T's. <laughs> Um, but the hermit also is very spiritual, remember, spiritually inclined, connecting to source. And we've got the chariot. So we've got three major arcana cards right here. Beneath that is the four of pentacles, fours, the miser. Matters of home, the chariot does speak to uh, overcoming obstacles, taking charge of one's life, moving to a more firm foundation but it's taken, uh, it takes confidence, it takes patience, and it takes a lot of work, and someone's ready to come out because they've done their soul searching, they've seen the light. Virgo, Pisces. We've had a new moon in Virgo two weeks ago, and we've got a full moon in Pisces, everyone. This is crazy. Someone's ready now. The changes are here. That is what is hidden Four of Pentacles in the past, someone's been holding back on what their heart is telling them. Someone is holding back, being the miser, feeling as though where they're at emotionally, spiritually, physically was not a happy place with that Four of Pentacles, right? Let's see what the Karma Dharma is. 19th and the week ahead, please, Spirit. 19th of... September of 2021. We have justice, just as I spoke of before. Libra. Libra is going to, so it looks like the season of Libra is going to be quite an important time. Um, for me, justice, yes, it's a very... It's a very karmic card, but it also speaks of balance, harmony. Remember that Mars transiting through Libra in an uncomfortable state. Why? Because Mars is in the home of Venus and Venus transiting through Scorpio is in the home of Mars. So there's a flip-flop of energies. It's like someone's wearing the shoes of the other person or, you know, going into a position to see how the other person felt if this was some sort of a relationship. Um, but they help each other. There's help there. Um, so Venus transiting through Scorpio speaks to transformation of anything it is that we love. There's a transmutation that's going on. And Mars is being very, can I say, democratic or... Um, very ready to see the other person's side. So someone's ready to sit at a table and try and find balance and harmony, work with another person on what the issue was here. That's probably what could be the uh, major shift, the major change that's going on here. Let's see what the uh, Psychic Tarot for the Heart Oracle deck has. Nineteenth, please, in the week ahead. Thank you, Spirit. What's going on? 
We have rebuild. Again, we've got the tower, everyone. Two tower moments here. And we've got the emperor. Oh, my God. Wow. What's at the bottom? And we've got choose your battles. Seven of uh, wands. This is the seven of wands. So look at this little person up against these three. I don't know. It feels as though they're in up against um, major uh, difficulties. I mean, this is like a nightmare, you know. But look at the stance that he has here. These, these three people, deities, situations could be leaders, could be, could be world leaders, could be people that are very important in, in their life, or this could also be someone fearing that they're not big enough or good enough. But the stance that he's taking here, and the Seven of Wands says that we do have the upper hand. Whatever it is that we're up against, we've got the ability. Seven does speak to the chariot as well, right? So anything to do with past matters, cancer, our country, our home, our, our lineage, matters to do with the past as Mercury is going to retrograde. Mercury now is, as you know, this week uh, ends, Mercury will turn retrograde. So we're dealing with a lot of past matters. And look at the Emperor here, number four, and we had the Four of Pentacles here. Four of Pentacles, again, a four, and four speaks to home for me. So someone not being in a place of happiness where their business is concerned, their home, matters of family, parents, father, mother, children, family, family situations, or someone feeling stable. A change needs to happen here. And we've got the emperor here who's made up his mind that's how i see him in this deck here we've got two emperors so it's like the gemini energy and i did say gemini earlier so i'm just wondering if you're dealing with someone that's got strong gemini in their chart they've made up their mind they're following their calling they're following the north node north node in gemini which is getting out of their comfort zone but it took two tower moments for that to happen we could see here, it says lead. Someone who's in power, the emperor, is taking lead. Okay. But they're choosing their battles. They're being very intelligent. Three of pentacles, four of pentacles. Lots to do with uh, work matters, money matters, group effort. And we've got the three of rods. So we've got a couple of threes here which someone's turning their back on something that they uh, maybe was at an imbalance, was not at a healthy balance. And well, we've got strong Mars energies here. So Aries and Scorpio. Remember, Aries is Mars. Mars ruled. So it looks like with Mars moving through Libra, going to bring a few tower moments matters to do with justice court sit the court system lots of litigation going on lots of things that we're going to see on a collective scale as well everyone let's take a couple of lenormand and see what's what's playing out so we've got a 9 10 and an 11 both these cards are major arcana cards. Strong, strong energies. What's going on, please, spirit? We've got the bouquet. The bouquet. So this is an offer, and it's the Queen of Swords. Queen of Swords is my Libra card. We've got number 12, which is the birds. But we've got owls here, which speaks to intelligence, wisdom, um, after secrecy, maybe. And 12 is the hanging man. So someone is seeing things from a different perspective. There's also knowledge coming through concerning an offer. So matters of truth, matters of justice, concerning some sort of an offer, which the bouquet speaks to spring. So it's very, um, 
very on point with the change of seasons and this the flowers can also speak to happiness or a sense of blooming energies jupiter in sagittarius this is and this card here is um it speaks to temporary something temporary it's aquarius in uranus sorry it's uranus in aquarius <laughs> So it can speak to excitement, it can speak to gossip though, news, um, the birds. The birds speak to news coming through, but it can also speak to, yes, excitement, but also anxiety before, before um, the knowledge or with the knowledge that comes through. And we've got someone on a path needing to choose number 22. In six to seven weeks, everyone, this is Venus in Libra, which Venus has already passed through Libra. But Venus in Libra is that ethereal Venus. She's that spiritually inclined Venus. She's the love of the universe. She's an, uh, a spiritual love. She's not a physical, tangible love. But this can speak to, yes, opportunities, because remember that Mars is now passing over the same degrees that v that Venus was passing over a little while ago. So it's as though the Divine Feminine has been there, done that. She's been waiting on the Divine Masculine to, um, you know, to step into her shoes and see what it was like for her. But she's taking the lead. The Divine Masculine is following. So this can speak to hesitation and difficulties, but also opportunities for travel someone could be set in separation mode as well because the news comes in maybe there's been too much sacrifice matters that have been unknown will be known with this full moon in pisces happening now happening now in the next few hours let's take one more on that path and we've got the queen of Cu uh, pentacles here so we've got queen of cups queen of pentacles queen of swords so this could be the same divine feminine in different light different energies queen of pentacles is someone that wants something long term very stable she wants something long term that's why the choice is difficult queen of pentacles could be a mother figure as well Queen of Pentacles. And we've got the King of Pentacles. Oh my God, everyone. My, my, my. King and Queen of Pentacles. And we've got the fish, which speaks to abundance. Yes, they both want the same thing. Yes, there will be an agreement. Yes, there will be an abundance with whatever decision is being made here. We've got the fish which speaks to Pisces. They've been through this repetitive times. The fish speaks to repetition. This is Venus in Taurus. So we've got the ethereal Venus, as I said, Venus in Libra, but we've also got the physical Venus, which says that a spiritual connection could be turning real. And we've got two very experienced energies now we do have a queen of swords here which could speak to a divorce someone's going through divorce with the owls here can speak to secrecy maybe this was a secret connection for others of you with a queen of swords this could be a ruling being made or remember that the queen of swords is someone that's come out of divorce or separation she's very intellectual she's just very She's very cold and she just is not someone that opens their heart. But she's also Libra, which again speaks to justice. This speaks to someone who could be also in a very good financial situation. King of Pentacles, usually a father. We've got a father and a mother here. Now, the abundance can be on an emotional level, but also on a physical level. Okay. This does speak to wealth. Let's see what's at the bottom of the deck. And we've got the mother figure, the bear, which is a number 15, everyone. And 15 is the devil. 
a mother figure or someone that's protecting her what is important to her, her cub, her finances, her position in society. Look at the claws on her. And it's the Ten of Wands, which says this is the end of the burden. Or remember that Ten of Wands does speak to putting in a lot of hard work. The bear speaks to Mars in Aries. So someone having the courage to stand up and be strong, take the lead. Remember that the emperor says lead and the bear is a motherly figure someone who's in a position of power but also we've got the saturnian limiting energies here as well now this speaks to something long time someone in position of leadership power dominance this could be a dominant mother this speaks to strength of character a boss And we've got the ring, which the ring and the Ace of Wands, right? This is the Ten of Wands, which says that we've had a beginning and an ending or an ending and a beginning concerning a commitment, a marriage, a contract. And this is a number seven, 25 equals a seven. So change of, change of energies. Um, the ability to overcome, to move forward. And what I notice in this card here, can you see that there's an eight on top of the ring, the infinity symbol? And the infinity symbol speaks to cycles, right? Something infinite, something um, ongoing. Eight is also, um, it's the strength card, which speaks to Leo again. And Leo does speak to the heart. So let's take a few more cards. I'm going to take a different deck to get a bit more clarity here on what's going on. Wow, everyone. So we've got uh, 12 and 22, 34, and a 7 is 40, 1 which equals a 5, and 5 is the Hierophant again. So if we add another six onto the five, that's 11. Again, justice. <laughs> What's the sun all about, play spirit, in the foundation? What is the root of this reading? We've got the death card. So Scorpio, three of cups. And the world card. So something has been changing, something concerning a love triangle, three people involved in a situation here where there was a lot of happiness. Let's say with a death card because death, the death card is Scorpio and Scorpio is intimacy. Uh, Scorpio is fixed water. We've got Leo, which is fixed fire. So a lot of fixed energies, which does speak to difficulty in change. And this is concerning something or someone's happiness having ended because there was a third person. Because this was a karmic chapter that needed to end in one's life. Third person may have also been a child. Now, the world card can also speak to physical distance. So someone's beliefs, physical distance having been what was the reason why something had to go through a uh, long change. The death card is a process, right? So I'm going to say here, for some of you in the distant past, because that's what the position speaks to, and someone's happiness within a home as well, matters to do with the past. This was a long process. Now, even here, we could say that there was um, sexual intimacy between a love relationship and emotional happiness 
but there was physical distance or difference differences in social standing or in someone's someone's upbringing so the way someone believed where someone came from let's see what this will of fortune is in the hidden position we have the king of swords aquarius gemini libra we've got the justice again so this is something legal playing out here and we've got the seven of wands which we've got here someone choosing their battles carefully this is mars in libra i'm telling you now this is Mars tiptoeing in the sign of Libra because if Mars is not careful, he's quite brutal. He can be brutal. He needs to have the tact of the King of Swords, which is intelligence. Uh, remember, the King of Swords could be someone who is very good with knives. He's a surgeon or he's just very, um, um, very political, very good with politics. So doing, you know, going through, going through surgery, but being very careful, going through an operation and knowing how to use that scalpel. That's what I feel this is saying here. Spirit has their back though. The justice card is a very karmic card. It's, it's a major arcana and the will of fortune. Both very popular, very um, positive cards. So someone's got the upper hand here. They've got luck on their side. They've got the intelligence. They've got that higher mind, that open perspective, that intelligent mind. Let's see what that Seven of Pentacles is. We've got the Hermit. So I'm going to say in the time of Virgo, it seems like that as the sun has been transiting through Virgo, someone's exhausted here. They're looking at their investments, what they've invested in. They're looking at how they can get unstuck, but they're growing spiritually. Now, three of wands, doing the work and hopefully being able to, to have those ships coming in, to have that you know, indication that the work that they've done is not gone in vain. The Three of Wands says that there is possibility here to reap the rewards. And the Seven of Pentacles is a pretty good financial, financially, um, financial situation to be in. Seven of Pentacles is pretty good. And we've got the Seven of Swords, which again speaks to intelligence. Someone's been looking for the answers because there's been stealth here. There's been a sense of um, sneakiness. Someone has stolen away with something here. Is it money? Is it glory? Someone's glory? Or is this just because we've got the hermit twice here? Again, someone being very intelligent, having the ability to do, to uh, discern and see things from that critical eye, that critical Virgo eye, being very good with the details. So it feels as though here someone has been working physically very, very hard on something and they're exhausted. Now they're using more their intelligence and connecting to spirit, maybe needing to see with the help of spirit what it is that they're hoping to come out with information is it is it legalities is it health for some of you this could be a health matter or is it that just someone's been very secretive let's see with a hanging man because remember that the full moon in pisces and neptune transiting through pisces has has made us uh, maybe even very, you know, very confused and maybe even deceiving ourselves about a situation. Let's look at the hanging man. We've got the six of cups, 
We've got the Eight of Swords, so worries could be concerning children or someone feeling entrapped um, with the changes that are coming. You know, we've got the Six of Cups and then the Five of Cups. So someone being very nostalgic, but saying that I want to go back there, but I'm trapped. I've got to, to clean something up here. Something's got to be cleaned up, the truth. Something that was secretive could also be seen at this time. Why? Because they have, remember the Pisces card and the Hanging Man does get to see things from a different perspective. Let's take one more on that Five of Cups. And we've got the Ten of Cups. So it is concerning a family, some family with children, past happy times, but there's been disappointment here because of an imprisoning situation, an illusion that puts someone in an imprisoning situation, lies that put someone in an imprisoning situation, deception. Let's look at the moon. We have the Four of Swords. As you can see, the warrior is lying, resting, and she's also resting too. Maybe this is saying that time, take time out to rest, um, re rejuvenate, recuperate, get yourself revitalized. I'm going to tell you, Pisces Full Moon is going to give us vital information and dreams coming through from source 100 percent pay attention so what we don't know here and what the full moon will probably show us is that someone's taking time out there's been a disappointment there's been pain four of swords right which comes after the three and the page of wands says that someone has been now is ready to go on that journey this for me is Aries energy what comes after Pisces is Aries remember that as the moon will complete because it's at the final degrees of Pisces at the 29th degree which is a critical degree so it's a critical moment that a chapter ends and someone just as the moon will pass hours after it will enter Aries which is the house which is the sign ruled by Mars where someone's going to have the courage the bravery to go on that journey to send out that message to communicate and follow what it is that they desire and we've got the Emperor again so we've got two fours and the Emperor can speak to limitations for me, but I feel that we're going to see what the limitations are here, what the disappointments are. Someone was not willing to take a risk before, now they are. Let's take that Queen of Cups, because they've already, has the, how does that saying go, uh, once bitten, twice shy? They've been burnt already. They've got not, they don't have that much to lose now. Let's look at the Queen of Cups, which speaks to someone following their heart and their intuition. Six of Swords, leaving conflict and moving on. This could be a literal movement, um, moving towards serenity. The King of Cups, King and Queen of Cups, everyone. Remember that this is the Scorpio card. It will be for a lot of you. Scorpio for others of you it could be Pisces or Cancer Cancerian energies but and they could have also some air in their chart strong air but with the king of cups this is someone that's ready to offer their heart king of cups also with with Venus in Scorpio hmm which can Venus in Scorpio can also be quite um, horrendous quite scary Uh, 
Venus in Scorpio is fearing the worst where where depth and intimacy is concerned. Hmm. I'm just wondering if it's the physical distance that's the problem here because the King of Cups is ready to offer his cup, right? And we've got the Five of Swords. So there is a blockage and I feel that the blockage could be paperwork uh, litigation still. There is a battle still here with this uh, the King and the Queen of Cups. Now if you look at the King and the Queen of Cups, they're facing different directions. Can you see that? So what this Five of Swords tells me is that things concerning the past are still going to be dealt with as Mercury will be retrograding at the end of September all the way into the 18th of October. So this will bring back matters concerning the past, maybe a, a fight, a competitive energy, maybe someone is thinking that there is a third person here where there isn't. We've got the Five of Swords, Six of Swords nine of swords which is the card of stress anxiety and lack of sleep someone may be having nightmares fearing the worst let's look at the tower someone's worried about this shift or the change or maybe even a a decision coming from the courts if someone is going through divorce let's take the tower We've got the Two of Swords, which is a card of choices. Um, just like with the path here, everyone. Two of Swords is like the path. Wow. The Star card, Aquarius. Communication, hope. The hope, the ability to heal any wounding or but what what the tower is showing us is that the choice that's made that will be made that is being made or from going from one place to another place which was the second choice maybe maybe we were stuck someone was stuck in the first choice and uh, they were having dilemmas about moving towards the second choice whatever that means for you or making their choice without having all the information and knowing that spirit has their back with the star card here and the star card does speak to something that is a wish fulfillment could be at a physical distance or this can speak to communication now the star card does speak to friendships as well Let's look at what comes after the star, which is a card of hope. And we've got the Queen of Wands, everyone. Usually my Leo card. Queen of Wands, someone is hoping that they this shift will bring them what it is that they desire and put them in a position of power. Queen of Wands is also the lucky queen. Remember, she is very attractive, very much about leadership, taking action. Let's take one more on that Queen of Wands. And we've got the Six of Wands, everyone. So ego could also be in the picture here. That's why we've got a Tower moment. Someone's ego is coming down here, and the Queen of Wands usually does have ego if she's a Leo. We've got Aquarius and Leo here. Aquarius and Leo both. And this could be pointing back to the time of Leo as the sun was transiting through Leo and we had two full moons two full moons in the sign of Aquarius which this is pointing to this is pointing to the 20, uh, 23rd of July and then the 22nd of August where someone's been humbled the major these major changes and tower moments have come in to show them that they're not bigger, their ego cannot be bigger than what spirit's plan is for them. And remember that the last full moon, the last full moon before this full moon now, so I'm looking at a month back, was that 
full moon in Aquarius, that blue moon, which blue moon means that it's a rare full moon. Something rare happened at the end of August. That was also at the 29th degree, at the critical degree of Aquarius. But whatever it is, whatever this shift is, it's going to bring sense of balance, recognition, success. Let's look at the Emperor here. We've got the Ace of Cups, so this Emperor is starting something that's going to make him very happy. This is a gift given to him, or this is something, his hand, um, or his offer. Remember, we've got the bouquet here. But I would say that it's spirit. The spirit is gifting this emperor, this potential. Will they take it is the thing. We've got five of cups and one is six cups, which speaks to the hanging man. There's been a lot of sacrifice, a lot of... Uh, Maybe there'll be more generosity, more compassion now. Let's see. And we've got the fool. So a new beginning, a new cycle. Someone, yes, taking that leap off that cliff, taking that next step, leaving past grievances, moving towards a new beginning, a new matter of happiness and stability. We've got the Ace of Pentacles as well. And we've got Three of Pentacles, which does speak to expansion. Someone's efforts being noticed. This can speak to business as well, where there is the ability to succeed. This could speak to a new project as well for this emperor on another level. But, you know, the Three of Pentacles can speak to a love triangle as well. But we've got Four Pentacles here, everyone. And Four was the Miser card, remember, that we had there someone that was minding their heart or someone that was waiting for a connection, a connection that felt like home to them. Let's take one more on that three of pentacles. On, on that ace of pentacles, someone's willing to do the work for a stable new beginning, long-term commitment, new project, teamwork this speaks to. And we've got the Knight of Wands. Knight of Wands does speak to passion. It does speak to action being taken, someone being very driven, someone maybe even moving, moving to a new area, someone traveling in with, you know, that light. The, the Wands, the Ace of Wands does speak to their desires. They're running with their desires and they're going to take that risk. This could also be someone that travels a lot for work. Someone maybe that was more of a player once upon a time. Now they're more about wanting to settle down. And this could be a literal journey as well. Let's see what's at the bottom of the deck. We've got the devil. The devil can speak to the limitations or the bear. The devil does speak to that cycle or anything concerning fears and toxicity. What sits beneath it? Wow. I'm going to say, do not fear the changes that are ahead of us. This is a blockage, which with the two towers here is saying that this blockage will be dealt with from spirit. Spirit has seen that there's been sacrifice. Now this can also speak to someone in a toxic situation or someone trying to numb out the pain, drinking too much, taking medicine. This can also speak to a secretive sexual connection. And we've got the page of pentacles, someone having to need and need it was needing to learn some form of a lesson. I want to take one card on that five of swords. And we have the Queen of Swords here. So again, six swords here. But the Queen of Swords does speak to using that sword, that sword of truth. Remember, it's the Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords, which is the sword of victory. Even though it's a double-edged sword, which can pain and hurt both people here, all three. 
because we've got Queen of Cups, King of Cups and the Queen of Swords here. But it's a very powerful sword. Queen of Swords holds the sword of truth. Truth is what does give us the power. All right. Let's take let's take Mystic Moon Oracles. A couple of Mystic Moon Oracles and see what's going on here. A lot of truths are going to come to the surface. The Tower moments will be surprising, shocking, bringing us lots of revelations. There's going to be a rebuilding and someone taking the lead because something is coming down. It's all because of karma. Karma Dharma. Remember the Justice card right here? The time of Libra will be very, very important. We have a divine masculine that's unawakened here. We've got a sense of abandoning or abandonment. These could speak to childhood issues or someone having abandoned a relationship because they were unawakened to this and they were doing their shadow work. Interesting. So childhood issues having come up because of some form of an abandonment, someone felt as though they either needed to abandon because they were dealing with someone who was in their shadow side. The shadow work does speak to the devil here. Or needing to go through a karmic chapter in their lives to awaken. The unawakened doesn't awaken easily. They need tower moments. What's going on? We've got mute. Someone was doing the inner work here. And remember that the hermit can also speak to a tarot reader, an astrologer or a psychologist. Someone may have been seeing a psychologist. Someone may have been dealing with their shadow side. Fears of abandonment concerning relationships as well. So there was a deafening silence here. We've got commitment. Newt. Putting a commitment on Newt. Now the commitment does not only have to mean relationship. It could speak to someone's commitments in life, right? And there's the devil card again, the stuck energies, which this to me speaks to Capricorn and the devil, Saturn. Now, Venus and Mars will be conjoining and uh, doing a dance in the sign of Capricorn end of January into February. But Venus will be turning retrograde in uh, on the 19th of December. So this to me is pointing to someone needing to do the work, trying to come out of a dark chapter in their life concerning an, a commitment. Um, for those of you that have been dealing with someone that was in another connection, they've probably muted you. They're doing the work behind the scenes. You don't know what's going on here. But we're going to have revelations with the tower moments. We're going to have information that will be coming through. Now, the stuck energy is I do feel the Capricorn season and with Venus retrograding, obviously, at the end of the year, that will be very important for relationships. We will have the revelations coming through as Mercury will retrograde as well. So we're sort of heading towards, you know, that chapter towards the end of the year, January and into February concerning relationships. Relationships could be family, they could be work, they could be love. Okay, let's take a couple more. We've got a soulmate connection here, and he's actually making an offer here. Even though there's stuck energies here, the stuck card can also speak to me about something that's long term. That's why this is a hard decision. Let's see what else. And we've got big dreams, everyone. As I said, pay attention to your dreams. This is the Neptune card, right? Someone's ha had big dreams, but they were stuck. Was it fantasy? Was it reality? 
This full moon in Pisces is going to give us some information about that. Was there a, you know, was there deception? Was there, there a third person? If, if there was a third person and someone wasn't happy in a situation, were they being truthful with me? You're wondering. Big dreams can speak to a big deceptive energy, but it can also speak to a big dream that could come true. Magic. And we've got nostalgia. So the Six of Cups is here once more. And there's decisiveness. Look at the way he's holding the heart. This is, reminds me of the Four of Pentacles, someone not letting go of a situation, nostalgia, being nostalgic about the past. But this can also speak to strong love concerning a child. So if the child was the third situation, the third person or the blockages that someone needed to do the work and be stand in integrity as a parent, then we understand where the difficulties come from. Have a look at this card. It's an amazing card. This could be quite scary. We tend to have dreams, nightmares like this. We don't know what is lurking beneath the water. This looks like a whale to me, and a whale speaks to strength. It speaks to the Piscean energy, either a big shock or a big surprise. Remember that fish? And whales are mammals, right? They care for their, li for their little ones. There's protection there. Um, and... Well, the Piscean energy, I feel this full moon will show a lot. And remember, as I said, pay attention to your dreams um, as you can get some revelations from there. But I do feel that the stuck card here is a moment of pause. We've got, there's a reason why someone was stuck or time had to pass. There is an offer of that on the table. It may, for some of you, it will be real. For others of you, it will be a big bubble that will burst so what you've been imagining um, was an illusion so it'll be different for each of you let's see what's beneath this nostalgia card and we've got forgiveness so someone is seeking forgiveness here concerning the past so expect people old relationships to come in and they could be i mean the six of cups could also be uh, siblings you know, a relationship with your sibling. I mean, the emperor can speak to something stable or a father figure who could be, you know, in the picture here concerning his children or, you know, two siblings, three siblings. Lots of stories could come through from this divine spread. The, uh, the energies are the same, though, everyone. They're the same. Let's take the Island Time Wellness. Major, major changes coming through. Shocking revelations, information. Big changes that will bring a sense of abundance, will bring people back from the past and truths from the past that were not communicated. Choose your battles, it says. Choose your battles. Let's see. Engagement ring, engagement, partnership, commitment, eternity, completion and union. The butterfly, relationship evolving to the next phase healing the inner child and growth and not enough frustrated in relationship lack of confidence self-sabotage fear ego issues and jealousy so right on point yes there could be a third person someone maybe didn't feel enough they had to awaken to this connection um fears of jealousy fears of uh, fear of an ego issues someone not feeling enough not someone maybe felt a little bit intimidated here as well that's probably what these the stuck energies are here but the engagement ring remember we also had another ring here which speaks to maybe someone 
having been in a commitment that was not that was not what they what you know they, there was a sense of following traditions or rules and regulations i would say here and we've got the divine feminine here someone maybe a mother being in a connection where there was she was dealing with someone very controlling maybe in this relationship had to go through transformation sometimes to get someone unstuck that's why a third person will enter enter the picture because someone needs to awaken and where there's been difficulty and blockages the tower moments come in to awaken someone to the truth let's see because we've got frustrated in relationship here lack of confidence someone is wanting to reach out they're probably looking for forgiveness but they're they're frightened that they'll be um They're frightened that their 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 forgiveness will not be accepted. Let's see. And we've got clock. There is the timing. Need time takes time. In time cycles. Time to heal. Progress. Exactly what I've been saying. It's all about timing. It's all about timing. It's a it's a process. It's a process for many of you. And the clock does speak to timing and Kronos, Saturn. Someone needs time. You could be dealing with someone that's got strong Saturnian energies. Capricorn, Aquarius in their chart. And we've got I like you. Someone likes you. Romance is blooming. Fun flirting. Want to date. Maybe this will be the restart where you start again from the bottom with flirtation, with that heart fluttering. We've got the sun card at the seed here, right? And the sun does speak to flirtation. So maybe we need to lighten the energies. Maybe for some of you, this is a beginning. You've come out of a difficult relationship and you're now ready to go out and date. Be amongst groups, amongst people. And with a tower moment, your your life is shifting drastically here. And th th this could also speak to someone is realizing, oh my God, I'm now free to do what it is that I want. I've come out of the burdens. I've come out of my stuck energies. Now I'm free to pursue whoever and whatever it is that I want. And that's with a hermit as well with this Virgo energy. So there is a sense of freedom here, everyone. We've got Aquarius and we've got Capricorn here, both ruled by Saturn. And they are squaring, both of them are squaring all year and into the beginning of 2022. But we've got another exact square. We're looking at October, November that are going to be difficult because they'll be squaring once more. Um, and of course, they affect very much the fixed signs, the fixed signs. So Leo, Aquarius, Taurus and Scorpio, because as Mars is going to finish up in Libra, he will enter his home of Scorpio, where he's going to scratch those wounds again. Right. He's going to through Scorpio. Scorpio is opposite to Taurus. Scorpio and Taurus and obviously with Aquarius we've got we've got a um, Jupiter and Saturn there Leo is in opposition so all that fixed cross again will be will be um, brought up to the surface again so whatever it is that we're dealing with matters to do with the past blockages conservatism this is the age of Aquarius. This is Aquarius and Uranus is stronger than Saturn. Uranus was the father. Therefore, where there've been stuck energies, if where there's been no value, no stability, no feel good energies with Uranus moving through Taurus, the square, this, you know, matters of the past in mythology, Saturn, the father, wanting to take over the throne from Uranus. 
history repeats itself. This is a power struggle. And whatever's going on in the ethers with the planets is being reflected here. Saturn can speak to the governments. Aquarius speaks to people and the humanity. So we're seeing this playing out on many dimensions. What we need to do is trust. Trust in the divine plan. Trust that in everything that's been hidden will be shown. We're going to have many shocking revelations, as I said. Some of you have imagined what's going on beneath the surface. You will have an aha moment that your instinct, your intuition was on point. Others of you are going to have, just like when we blow a big bubblegum balloon in our face and it breaks on our face, that's what's going to happen. We're going to have a shock, but it will be freeing. That's what I feel here. All right, and before I leave you, and I want to thank you so much for being here. I'm wishing you well. Um, I'm sure a lot of you uh, have seen my unboxing. Uh, Sally from Star Struck uh, Magic. She's uh, a client and friend of mine. She's in the UK, and she sent me this as a gift. Thank you, Sally. Um, she creates these masterpieces. Right. And I'm not going to lie to it. A client of mine said, Kathy, light it because it's such a beautiful, I mean, it's sent with love. You might as well use it. I don't want to spoil it, but it's it's actually was gifted to my daughter because my daughter's in uh, creative, a creative line of work as well. So um, Sally, Sally, who doesn't have a website yet, but she is preparing it. She also makes these candles for each astrological star sign. So she sent me this and uh, she's just amazing. And these are not only works of art, they smell unbelievably. So um, you can find her on Instagram. You can communicate with her uh, through Instagram right now. Um, I will have the link for you beneath the video. And uh, you may want to, because many people said that they'd like to get one of these and Sally ha has got a lot more that she's creating. So it's good to support each other, right? And who wouldn't want to have one of these works of art? Um, so yes, you can find her link beneath in the description box. Support, show your love. And it's something of great quality. It's just astounding, absolutely gorgeous. Um, have a closer look. Just wanted to show it to you up close. Look at the work that's gone in here. And it's just amazing how, you know, um, this came through the mail. Uh, it do does have a little crack in it, but it uh, doesn't matter. It came all the way from the UK. Um, it was worth the wait. And with this full moon in Pisces, right? <laughs> how imaginative, how creative and how gorgeous, how magical is that? Anyway, I will leave you with that. Thank you all so much. Sending you lots of love, lots of light. Remember, a full moon happens uh, now. It goes on till the next full moon. So we're talking about a month ahead. Now, for many of you, time-wise, this will be for the week. For others of you, this can go on for a month. This could pan out within the month until the next full moon. Now, those of you that are on Patreon, as you know, we go into deeply into the astrology. Those of you that are interested in the minor details, the, you know, I'm, I'm a double Virgo, so I go into many, many details to help you understand how, how the energies are playing out in the ethers and how they affect us in our own personal, but also uh, personal life, but also on a global scale. Um, you... If you're interested, join us on Patreon. It's really worth it. Thank you to all of you that are on Patreon already. Thank you for your support, everyone. I'll be back next Sunday with another Divine Spread. So press on that notification bell. Show your love through commenting, sharing this video. It helps the channel a lot. Thank you, guys. Ta-ta.